Today I'm having Tom Young with me. He's British, right? From Britain. From Britain. He lives in Lebanon since 2009. He's been visiting since 2006. This is 2024. You will enjoy immensely this interview because it's deep and shows how much a person can learn from Lebanon and how much Tom is giving us a very deep connection to him. Tom, be longing. Mm. That's the title of your last exhibition and last works. Yeah. Mm. And you mentioned is to be, there's no need for longing to anything. Right. Right? Tell me a little bit more about this yes. belonging and, and your theory without about being and let's yes. discuss that. Yeah, sure. Well, I think the idea of belonging is something that's very human. Mm. Uh, we all want to belong to something, to someone, to some idea or concept or belief, uh, be it a country or a nation or a group, a religion, a belief system. A political party um, or a nation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a very human um, instinct because we are tribal by nature. Um, the social and social, need. right? Um, and so I think that's a very natural thing. And but the, as a word, belonging, it struck me as a very interesting uh, word in English because if you divide it in two. You, to yeah. some extent, have a paradox or a contradiction in terms or an oxymoron, as, as, as they say. Um, because in, in a spiritual sense, if we are truly being the idea that I am, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not I am anything. If you just cut it off there, just I am, that's, that's a pure state of being in a, in a spiritual sense. Yes, many in ancient uh, right. teachings tell you it's not um, about how, how much you do or who is you to whom. It's about being present. to yourself. Right. Yes. And from the Vedas, the Hindu tradition, obviously yeah. the Buddhist tradition, the Christian tradition, um, know that I am, you know, um, in many different, the Sufis, many different traditions talk about this idea of pure being. Um, and... And to some extent, particularly in, in, in Buddhism and, um, Christianity, um, it's, it's, it's the desire for material stuff yeah. or, or the desire for anything, um, which to some extent is a longing. It's, it's a, yeah. could be said is longing is a kind of craving for something mm -hmm. that you haven't got. So longing, the very word longing, bandishi, you know. I want. Mankenshi, I mean, bandishi, yeah. Yeah. Um, it means you haven't got it. And so if you're longing for something, it means that you are, you feel that you're incomplete somehow. Um, you're longing usually for someone, perhaps who has died, someone who, or you're longing for, a, let's say, a, a golden age in your life or a golden age in, in, in the history of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very, very present in the Lebanese psyche. It's this idea of nostalgia for some golden age that was lost because of a trauma. And um, so <laughs> it's as if we're incomplete beings if we're longing for something. Um, so basically the idea is, is that if you are truly being, then you are not longing for anything because you are already complete. Yes, I understand. On, 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 on one level. It, it's an interesting, uh, let's say these are ideas to conjure with. And I, yeah. I'm not giving any answer, any definitive answer, but it's just something that's, it provokes questions. That, that are interesting to me on a purely human spiritual level. But I think they, um, they also apply very much to the condition of Lebanon as a, as a place. Um, uh, because of this nostalgia for something that was lost. Um, and that, um, 
And I think, <laughs> I mean, also paradoxically, we are longing to be. <laughs> we, and we are longing to belong on another level. Um, and, um, people join groups and join, often join religions or tribes or, 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 or whatever it is. To nurture, to, to, to grow, to belong, to, yeah. to, to feel. Exactly. Because we are, you know, I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that, that people's health is, is, is often better when they feel a sense of collective. Yeah. Part of a belonging, community. Part of a spiritual tradition or they, um, gather to, um, perform some sort of spiritual praxis, hmm. either in a religious building or perhaps in doing yoga or playing in a band or singing in a choir or something like that. Um, and uh, so we're longing for that. <laughs> so yeah. we, it's, it's, yeah. I understand. And so, just to give it a little bit of context, are several things I want to discuss with you. And what came on my mind when I was checking your book, the catalog of your works now, by the way, Tom has a new space starting 2024, and it's an amazing space. It's an old house in Jumeizi, and it has all this these paintings, all the reference to Beirut, to the old Beirut, to the nostalgic Beirut that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and the contemporary Beirut. Yes, and, well. and what's going on and all these things that are happening and what's remaining. And the political crises. Yes. Um, past and present. Yeah. Some um, delving into the history of the colonial history, you know, the the rivalry between the British and the French, uh, how Lebanon that, and, and before the, the 1940s, yeah. that's what yes, that, after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, um, and that period of time, um, where there were some very interesting individuals, uh, who seemed to stand out from the crowd, yet the whole system of colonialism brought about a very divided part of the world, um, which, and we're seeing the disastrous, catastrophic effects of that now, mm. clearly, in, in, in Palestine, yeah. Gaza, and um, Lebanon itself is, is, is just very... Having, yeah, having their, their own burden with that. Yeah, yeah, and those, and those alliances are, some of them seem to be innately Lebanese in, 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 in the tribal sense, but I think a lot of a lot of the uh, tribal divisions were exacerbated, were, were in fact exploited and made worse by the colonial powers who, who, who in fact exploited these divisions within Lebanese society um, from the Ottoman times, and definitely the French and the British did that. So, um, yeah, so we, we're living in, let's say, the repercussions and the echoes of those times. So I'm... So there, there's a room of paintings all about a political struggle, um, those, those struggles which are past and present. And talking about belonging and longing, a lot of those struggles are about the sense of belonging to a nation or a group. Yeah. Lebanese, Palestinian, or, or you know, religious divides, Israeli, as we're seeing now, with just horrendous consequences, the sense of sort of tribalism, the sense of mm. us and them. Um, it's so there's that going on, but then there's also the longing for peace. We're longing for justice. We're longing for fairness. And yeah, at the moment in the world, there clearly isn't any, or there's very little, um, even though. The, in my opinion, the South African legal team brought a fantastic case to the to the International Courts of Justice, which was which was very inspiring. But um, there's, there's very little accountability. There's very little justice, it seems, at the moment, and so we're longing for. Unfortunately, we are. Um, 
we are testimony, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing in front of our eyes things that used to happen in history, unfortunately. And, well, there was that famous phrase, history, um, the end of history is, is the, the Japanese philosopher who, 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 who coined the phrase, which has proved out to be catastrophically wrong. Um, you know, it was, it was seen that the kind of free market economy of the world, and somehow, and the collapse of communism, you know, that was going to be the end of, of history as we, yeah, as we know it. But, but it's not it's that not. at all. It's just human beings, it seems, have a capacity for extreme cruelty and violence and, um, and genocide. Um, when you've, when you've, um, dehumanized the other to such an extent, um, Human beings seem to be capable of anything. Um, yes, and the most appalling atrocities, um, and we're seeing that now. That um, that's that, happening now. That, that what happened in the twenty twentieth century, we thought it was all over. It's not. It isn't. And I grew up in the UK, um, always thinking that, you know, the Brits and the Americans were the good guys who defeated the bad Nazis. You know, that's the narrative, uh, that I grew up on. And, 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 and now what? The, I mean, the yeah. same forces that defeated, um, you know, Nazism and, and, and those people who, who, who thought that genocide was a legitimate policy. Are now actively supporting it, and it's I I I mean this brings us a question of my sense of belonging because um, at the moment I don't identify with my homeland, um, certainly not the political powers. What's happening? Yeah. Um, so my sense of belonging is shifting. Actually, that was one of my questions about you've been you you're in Lebanon since 2009. We're in, we're in 2024 yeah. now, and my first visit was 2006. Uh, so you have a, like over 15 years of relationship with Lebanon. Yeah, nearly 20. Okay, uh, 18. So, but living here since 2009, right? Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to. To, to, to talk about this, but art, an artist, they, they reflect the world around them. They, they give their own testimony to, to the history, to the present, to what's happening that people can relate to. At the same time, you're putting yourself and, and reflecting from inside out about the belonging, belonging, about what what's happening to so many people that they are born in one place, they travel, they live in uh, somewhere else, me included, and there is this lack of total connection to one place. Yeah. They don't feel that just belong to one place. There's this wider space where they belong to those places and they don't. And it's very interesting that you just mentioned all these political issues and all that, that they reflect on you as a person. You know, yeah, why? Because people, they are yeah. supporting the governments, the systems, everything on the, on the bottom. But they are, these are the energy that support everything. Yeah. And you're feeling it on, on your core now, being in Lebanon. So I want you yeah. to give your, your vision of, like, born and lived in UK, and now you're in Lebanon for so many years. How much this widens your vision and... How much is it in you, this belonging thing that you're working on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it is. It's the journey of my life. It's the journey of everyone's life. So I think probably um, I'm no, no different. But um, yeah, I think for me, uh, growing up in the UK, there, there are many elements of growing up in the UK that that I, that I do identify with, you know, you know a free health service for, mm. for everyone. 
so the poor have access to free healthcare. That's amazing. London is a, the, probably the most cosmopolitan place ever in the history of humanity, as, as far as we know. Um, these are amazing things about the land that I'm from, and and and, and the music. You know, it's fantastic music scene. Best rock ever. The rock and roll, the you yeah. know, dance music. The, the so you everything. bring this charge of culture with you. I I love that and painting. You know, a lot of my favorite paintings. Second place in the world in, in, in Shakespeare, art. Turner. I mean, and lots of contemporary artists. Fashion, fashion design, amazing creativity. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I do draw strength from that, and and there've been some interesting adventurers, or sort of individuals. Um, let's say, yeah, I guess you could say. Um, I mean, the, the the obvious one in this region is Lawrence of Arabia, who okay. who, who, who who seemed to um, stand apart from the government. And okay. go his own way and identify with the oppression of the other. Um, but he was part of a bigger system, a colonial system. So in the end, he knew he was being used. Um, in Lebanon, there's, there's the interesting case of General Spears, who, who yeah. also seemed to stand up for the Lebanese cause, quest for independence, <laughs> and work towards that and, and go out of his way. And he could also see what a disaster Zionism was going to be for the Palestinians. So he campaigned against the Zionist project mm. and he was fired um, for all of these reasons. Um, so in the end, these, these individuals maybe try to do something good, but they're part of a very damaging system, the whole colonial system. Why were they here in the first place? Um, that's maybe the question to ask. Um, but anyway, this, that's a complicated subject. And, and I, yeah, it I, needs another, another, it's a, it's a whole a other podcast altogether. Okay. But it's anyway, those, let's say those adventurers who have gone out into the world. Um, and from my own family, I mean, my, my, I grew up hearing from my grandmother. She, she grew up partly in India. Well, the mm. British Empire. Yeah. But as an, as a young artist, she would leave the British colony and go and meet the local people and, and, and draw and paint. Okay. So she told me about that. She, she, she also uh, spent a lot of time in Kenya and Africa. And so I, those were inspiring stories. And yeah, so I suppose that there is an identity there. But these, to some extent, they're all figures who, to some extent, were stood apart from the authoritarian regime. Okay. Um, so that that idea, you, you don't have to be, say, British to do that. You could be from anywhere and be an individual who can see the limitations of whatever political authority there may be, um, and. Um, Anyway, I identify with those inspirations in my life. But at the same time, I, um, from an early age, I was interested in history. In fact, my father is, 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 a, is a historian now, having okay. been a judge. He brought me up to, to be very interested in history and explore interesting historical sites and read history. So I was, I re I've read a lot about, um, you know, yeah. Britain's role and, and the incredibly damaging role in creating the Middle East um, as we know it. And the really, yeah, some of the very blatantly genocidal policies of the British Empire in, in Kenya in the 50s, and not that long ago, um, in India, Pakistan, the, all the problems that the partition caused. And of course, the Balfour Declaration, Sykes Pico, um, the crushing of the Palestinian um, revolt in 1936 to 39. I mean, utter brutality. Um, and the British, um, there was one um, officer called Wingate who, who even taught it, the, the Zionist gangs at the time how to use these brutal techniques. And they're still being used to that, you know. So I'm I'm aware of those things and I just don't identify with that behaviour at all. 
Okay. I think it's disgraceful, and I think it's um, indefensible. And so, to some extent, I um, part of me has, has sort of moved away from whatever Britain, Great Britain, is supposed to be or to stand for. Um, you mean the, 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 the injustice? I mean the injustice, I mean the complacency, I mean the ignorance. Yes. Um, I mean the complicity, I mean the, the active support for um, brutal genocidal regimes. Uh, yeah. We don't need to um, mention, well, it's, it's obvious. Um, and, and I do. I, I just as an individual, I, I, in this life, in this incarnation, um, who knows? As the Druze say, maybe that uh, we we have many incarnations. But in this incarnation, I will not stand for this um, brutality and inhumanity. Mm. I don't want to be a part of it. I I, I personally. Um, yeah, living my life in, in such a way that I, I'm, I'm trying and I don't always succeed. Um, I'm flawed in many ways, but I'm trying to stand and um, use my art to stand for a common humanity that doesn't have a nation, that, doesn't, mm-hmm. that is not limited to a particular tribe or religion. It's, it's a... It's belonging to the world, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, um, and that's, I think, surely where we need to go as a species. Humanity, as yeah. We need to move towards we need to a common put human. Put down the walls, either uh, yeah. political or economical walls that yeah. would give whole privilege to a very small group of people on, on um, how do you say, on the back of other huge yes. group. Yeah. Yes, you know? that's that's right. So I'm and interested in I'm your good. vision. So you, you you're witnessing all that, you you research the history, you're seeing things from a totally different perspective than people in the West you call West are are they well, have I think like, a lot. It's a much clearer uh, idea being in Lebanon yeah. and having all that just, around you, yeah, you have to remove yourself from perhaps where you're from, yeah, in order to really see the world clearly. And and maybe Lebanon for me is is this incredible part of the world where different cultures come together: the east, the west. You know, it's the meeting yes. point of it's 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 an yeah, it's a cliche to say, but it's true. Um, and where they say the Western world, the sort of liberal, agnostic, Christian Europe and the sort of Islamic East. And then you have influences from Africa. You have influences from the North coming down. Um, you have, it's, 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 um, it seems to be a, a, a genuinely kind of global place, uh, a yes. place where the tectonic plates, the sort of, geopolitical forces of the world all meet um really unlike any other that i've ever been to and, and i mean I, unique unique structure utterly, unique it, culture it's, unique it's, political it's, system it's well completely it, it has all unique. this influence at the same time there is a very strong historical cultural heritage here oh, yeah i mean many different heritages um, yes you know Obviously, well, in a very small space, you have such a different culture. Mm. It's you know, they, they, you know, different places and different, let's say, tribes. They live next to each other and they live totally different life. You know, they, they, they're in a different time. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I have a a long running exhibition on Insider at the moment in the Souk, which is only 45 minutes drive. From where we are in Jamaica, I visited that. Yeah, and it seems like a different planet. Um, and so this thing about um, and that's fascinating to 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 work in these different communities for me. Um, and maybe I, I, and surely I have an advantage being an outsider because I'm not judged by my family name. You know, ah, yeah. oh, you're you're Maronite, you're you're Druze, you're 
Orthodox or Shia, whatever it is. Um, so I don't have that. I'm, I'm just the Ajnabi. And then yes. in Lebanon, that is a, perhaps an advantage. And also I'm the right kind of Ajnabi. Let's, let's, let's be clear. I'm, I'm white and European. If I was Sri Lankan, no, no it yeah. wouldn't work. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Um, I'm not always very comfortable with that. Um, but, um, but there it is. I'm, I couldn't be in any other skin, but the one that I'm in. <laughs> I understand. Um, and so what am I going to do with it? Well, I want to contribute something positive and, um, use, use my art to, to, to cross these boundaries and, uh, do something to connect. I think art is ultimately about connection. Um, and, um, it is. Communication and collaboration. It's not about ironing out the differences. Yeah, this yeah. is where we, we come onto the idea of tribes and differences. We were saying, I was saying that we are, we are innately tribal and that perhaps is never going to go away. But, um, I'm interested in the idea. It's a, it's a Greek word, harmony, harmonia. Yeah. And harmony um, means that it's a sound, or it's a sound, it's a chord in music. The musicians don't play the same thing, no. but they each one playing their part, and it harmonizes. Yeah, exactly. Harmony means not making everything the same, not saying all is one. Push it's, my democracy on everyone, or my whatever I think yes. is good. It's the harmony works because all the notes in it are different. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, and respecting that's, each. That's, that's the point. Each yeah. people's identity, mm -hmm. history, culture. And, and working out a way to harmonize um, exactly without um, homogenizing, without, without know, pushing this, the, this kind of globalization or this, you know, I mean, impossible, impossible idea of all is one. Sure. I, I understand. All, all is one, but also all is many. And, and actually one of my favorite uh, philosophers and scientists, um, Ian McGilchrist talks about this. Mm. Um, and he's, he's a neuroscientist who, who works with the brain, the left side and the right side. Okay. And how it's not about, you know, ironing ironing out one and it, it's about bringing the two in in some sort of in harmony in in coordination yeah yeah in in a kind of cohesion um and um i love that idea and and i think that's ultimately yeah what we need to work towards is is this system of rivalrous dynamics is a self-terminating system it's it, it can only lead to one thing and that's conflict yeah when you have rivalry when you want you don't accept the other and you just want yeah. to push your values on yeah. them it, it's a certain way of seeing us and them mm -hmm. i think there'll always be an us and the them because we are group we we we, we form in groups but it's there's a way of of of, of um yeah of, of living in that system which can be more peaceful and harmonious. And we obviously we don't know what that is yet because we haven't worked it out. Um, yeah. And otherwise we'd be... <laughs> How much of all that you're living in Lebanon and all this reference is influencing your art from the beginning? I, I, you mentioned to me, I, I asked you, when did you start as an artist or paint or draw? You said, like, since I could grab a pencil. Yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. At I mean, the same time, yeah. an artist, in in essence, they grow with mm. their art, and their art reflects their growth and their, their relationship to the place they are, to the culture they're exposed to. And you've mentioned all this connection to Lebanon, to the Middle East, and the disconnection with all this very... Um, classifying in the box or um, generalizing way of seeing the world. You got out of it yeah. and you're in Lebanon and you can have this connection with Lebanon 
being an outsider at the same time merging mm. with it, again, with, it with an outside vision which give you as a much critical vision of it so about this the influence of you living in Lebanon how much this changed your art or did it change at all oh yeah it changed a lot um I think it was always there. It was waiting to come out, but um, uh, it's pushed me in all sorts of different directions. Mm -hmm. It's made it much more politically engaged. I'd okay, say, to uh, you know respond to tragedy, traumas, um, past and present. Um, and I think before I was living in London, painting a lot in on the River Thames, uh, cityscapes of, of of London, which is a fascinating city architecturally. Um, I was always interested in the in the in the strata of architecture, the, the the contrast of the old and the new. And in a way, my work in London was like a, an apprenticeship for what I do in in Beirut. Um, okay. But I was painting a lot in the south of France and Italy and Spain and um, it, some in America, but also places like India and Morocco. You be um, there painting? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And East, Eastern Europe and Cuba and, and um, Malaysia. I mean, many different parts of the world. So I was, I was absorbing these different uh, influences from... Architectural, yeah, cultural. cultural, without really knowing what the work was about, without really being that aware, without really connecting myself to it. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, certainly when I came to Lebanon to do originally to do paintings, landscapes for a Lebanese guy in London who was my car mechanic <laughs> who wanted paintings of his homeland because he was, oh, he was long. This is how it started, yeah. 2006 so he he was longing for his homeland so that's my 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 the, you know my work began with a sense of longing for something so the reason you came to lebanon is to paint landscapes for a lebanese guy in london okay interesting yeah so i was doing commissions around the world on that basis mm. you know going being sent to places to paint for people who it loved those places okay. because they identified with those places so they wanted paintings of them you see so my work i guess has always been about the identification of of oneself with a place mm. interesting that yeah and i studied architecture at university so um my my very training was about the atmosphere and structure of places how the places feel, why are places designed the way they are. And um, anyway, that's a whole other story. From what I see in, in your testimonial, in, your, in the catalogue and, and from the paintings, it's not just architectural paintings of the space, of the place. No. It's, it's say it yourself. It's, yeah, well, they, they're, they're paintings that are about stories. Oh. Yeah. And maybe, you know, stories which, which are there to be uncovered, yeah. uh, which are, I, I, I guess I try to suggest and, and evoke different memories, different stories, perhaps spirits that I feel when I'm painting in a place, you know, such as the one behind me in, in Salford in the great casino. Yeah, the first and, and, and only casino in the Middle East for, for many decades, uh, built in 18, the 1890s, um, was once a great, you know, destination for the rich and famous until it became ruined in, in this, in the civil war in Lebanon. So I spent, for example, many months painting in the hotel itself and feeling. It's the Sursu one. Right. Yeah, it was built by the Sorsok family. Yeah. Yes, I pass by when I come go to the, to the to the village and come back. It's in ruins now. Yeah, and right. they used to go up by train. Yes, there was a train station there. There's, in that painting there, there's there, there yeah. it is. Well, on the left, we'll show the painting, and it's right. amazing. You're mentioning you went and 
I could feel it's about opening up yourself to a place, you know, in a, in a spiritual sense, getting out of your own way so that you can be a channel for uh, these memories to come through. Um, and that's, uh, I'm fascinated by that process. Um, being a, because we, you know, we're like filters for what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious, the, 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 you know, the, the, you know, we, we're like kind of, you know, um, transmitters, yeah. I, I, I think. And um, that's my feeling anyway. Um, so yeah, it's, it's in a place like that or the Holiday Inn, for example, this, this, um, place here, which, you know, is the iconic symbol of the Civil War, it's still covered with bullets and, and, uh, derelict and empty occupied by the Lebanese army. But I'm, I'm going to say, elaborate a bit on, on why these places mean a lot to me and that. That also um, explains in some ways why Lebanon itself means a lot to me is because um, I, in, in, when I grew up uh, in, in England, I, let's say, experienced several tragedies and um, quite traumatic situations as, as a young boy. Okay. And so um, I mean, my mother died when I was 10. She took her own life. Okay. Uh, I've sent away to a boarding school in a big old building. Very sorry. Big old that. mansion. I grew up in a, you know, beautiful but large old stone buildings. Yeah. So there was a sense of loss and abandonment and tragedy that I uh, grew up with. And I think when I, when I came to Lebanon, um, the place resonated with me because everyone here has been through some sort of tragedy or dislocation or, or, um, dispossession of property or they've had to suddenly leave because of the war or there was something about the, the common experience of everyone here that resonated with me. Um, mm. and so I guess I felt more whole here, more understood. I felt I understood people on some level and they understood me. Uh, on some in different s- from the experience in, yes. in in England. Whereas in England, I felt um, more isolated. Um, okay, and so that's a lovely experience to be understood, to feel attuned to your environment. Um, and resonance. What is resonance? Well, it's a it's a it's it, it's when two vibrations vibrate at the same frequency. And they amplify each other. Yeah, and they they sort of fit, and yes. they, they they work. So I think that's something about Lebanon that um, attracts me, and why I came alive here as an artist. So it was like I sort of woke up, basically. And depending on your experience, people, you know. Um, come, come alive in all sorts of places. I mean, India is, is, a, is famously a place where people go to and, and have it extraordinary revelations. And, yeah. Uh, and, um, well, I, I mean, I, I did too, and in some ways in, in India. Um, but, um, for me, yeah, Lebanon really was the most resonant place for me. Yeah. And, um, Out of the whole world that you've, you know, traveled all around, you actually answered the question by, before asking it, where would you live? And you're living in Lebanon. Yeah. Despite all the mess that we go through here of, of the basic, oh, wow. basic services. The basic. Well, but yes. at the same time, you're here. Right. Yes, that's that's true, and maybe you know there is a sense of I, I've got the luxury of choice, hmm. um, and I so that's that's a thing to bear in mind. You know there is a white privilege going on here, um, but I do I do uh, choose to be here, um, mm-hmm. despite yeah all of the crises. Um, maybe because also I can earn a good living here, a fairly comfortable living as an artist. Because the place resonates with me, I paint better pictures. Yeah. Because I paint better pictures, you could say I sell more. 
Because I don't paint the pictures primarily to sell them. Because you feel connected. Because it's about feeling. Paradoxically, those are the paintings that sell. This is the this is the strange thing about being an artist. But um, and so yes, so it works for me more or less economically, even though I lost a huge amount of money and, and savings and the crash here. But that's part of being here. Welcome I, to I, the I, had, I had my house smashed up in the explosion. I had also, my studio. I had my paintings ripped in the port explosion. I, I've lost, you know, lots of savings in the crash. Uh, so, yes. yeah, it's not easy, but it's good enough. Uh, it's it's certain, colorful. It's, it's challenging. It's inspiring. It is an adventure every day, I think, in living yeah, in Lebanon. It's not boring. Exactly. I, I, I talk to my friends like, you can, you can feel like th there's no service. You can get uh, stuck in the traffic. You get anxious. You get nervous. Oh, you get, but you're never bored in Lebanon. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Welcome to the rodeo. Well, <laughs> this is. First off, again, that's how I, to some extent, how I grew up. It's familiar. It's not better or worse. You know, I did, I did spend a lot of time in Andalusia, south of Spain. I could have lived in the south of France. I had opportunities to live in a beef, you know, party island where everyone has fun in Italy as well. Um, but it just didn't, it didn't resonate with me. It just didn't, it seems to sort of, I wanted to engage with the world and particularly because I'm interested in history and, and geopolitics. Um, after 9-11, I, 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 you know, that changed my life because mm. I started reading a lot more. What's going on in the world? Why is this happening? So I wanted to engage with those issues. Yeah. Um, And and also after the outright lies of, of the of the Western governments, Bush and Blair, about the invasion of Iraq, you know, it was clear that there was no accountability, the double standards, lying. Um, you know, the, that that was the moment I personally think that you know the line was crossed. Um, that um, actually, and, it's not just the line was crossed; it was crossed has been crossed along, but people are getting, with the help of the internet, things are more evident and we're able to see it more. Yeah. And refer to it and, and check it out. And since you've been here, you see that there's a whole different this whole... world that's happening here that people don't know about. Yes, they don't over there. see. I mean, it's so endemic that the way the structure of the whole media Um, landscape is constructed it's it's really it's completely racist it's that just and it's so it's to do with the language it's to do with the mention of certain words and names and how they put the yeah you know how many times for example the word mother uh, is used in response to the gaza israel war now way more on the israeli side than the palestinian side you know it's it's so subtle that you know the semantics The way that the, the, the Western world is, is manipulated yeah. in the media. Um, you know, uh, we take prisoners, they take hostages, you know. You know, how about the 7,000 Palestinian hostages, at least in Israeli jails? No, they're prisoners. They're not hostages. I mean, this is, it's just complete nonsense. And, yeah. And I did only, you, know, you the, could only witness things so, so clearly when you're here. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I want to, you know, I mean, my, my life is a path towards a greater understanding of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, the truth is, what is the truth? Yeah. We, it's very confusing. It's, 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 it's something. historically the truth that was according to who wants to tell you the truth. Yeah. Right. And, and the definition of power is those forces who are, who stand outside international law. You know, that people for whom the law does not apply have power. That's the definition, it seems, of power. That's um, really. And 
So this is sort of a uh, very interesting, and I think in Lebanon, yeah, I'm 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 learning more about this, and um, all of these things are also are very inspiring to to respond to as an artist. Um, although I'm primarily, a, you know, I'd say more of a kind of impressionist landscape yeah. architectural artist, I I I, I like being in this environment and it. It provokes me. Uh, yeah, exactly. I want to ask you one last question. It's not just reporting or documenting the landscape. Is it your love testimony or this this admiration testimony? Can I read it like this? Yeah. To Lebanon? Yeah, I think it is. It's um it's an expression of love in all its forms. From from the joy and to the pain, love mm. is, is multi layered. It's um, and they're also self portraits. A lot of the paintings. They, it's not just about Beirut and Lebanon. So that's how much you identify with. Well, yes, maybe. And this is you know identification with one story. Uh, it's not belonging. It's like like them and, and merging, like you mentioned. Uh, you have in your catalog about uh, Gibran, Khalil Gibran. Um, yes, it's, it, it's about. It's not a, It's not about the river entering the sea. No, it's the ocean. About, it's becoming. It's the river becoming. The the, you feel it like that. Well, that's contaminated yeah. by the Lebanese. Yeah, it uh, well, culture and, and, and again, life. if we come back to balance, it's between um, perhaps um, both merging and separation. I th- I th- and observing. Uh, yes, um, being the witness and being absolutely living it, involved, emerging, embodied yeah. in it. It's, it's, but it's, I think it's always both. It's, um, a bit of yin, a bit of yang, a bit of yin, yeah. or yin and yang. Oh. <laughs> That's an amazing combination. It's interesting because it does give a totally different perspective from someone being totally detached or someone so emerged that they can't see it as clear. So this is a very good, in my opinion, is a very good combination of being able to to you know merge into what's going on, what is it, and at the same time to give it this outsider, insider, mid-perspective. Yeah. Nos and nos. It's, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's a bit of, yeah, it's, it's a combination. I want to thank you very much. It's really nice. I enjoyed immensely the talk with you and your testimony about living in Lebanon and, and producing here and how much Lebanon is is being influential to your career and to your life in general. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, the first, and I hope the first of many yes. talks that we will have. And uh, we'll come back and talk about certain things. That, since you love history and your father was a historian, we can talk about certain subjects, certain certain things, certain movements, certain uh, yeah. many things to talk about uh, in the history of art and in the geopolitical craziness that we live. <laughs> sure, that, that will be a Tom, pleasure. thank you very much. I'm honored yeah. to have you with me here in this interview. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Cheers.